In this episode of the FXGM educational series, we're going to be taking a look at moving averages. Specifically, we're going to evaluate three kinds of moving averages, a simple moving average, a linear weighted moving average, and an exponential moving average, and why investors might use one over the other. So let's talk about how these are actually calculated. Now with a simple moving average, it really is quite simple. It's just the arithmetic mean. So if we were to take, for example, a five period moving average to keep this really simple, then all we're doing is we're taking the most recent period, which I've labeled day five, and the most furthest historical period, which I've labeled day one, we're just gonna total those up and then divide those by five. So if we were to do that, then the total value here, which would be 502.8, divide that by five, that's gonna give me a value for the simple moving average of 100.56. Now that value is going to change on a day-to-day -day basis as a new close price is initiated, which will then be day number five in our uh, list here. And day number one will have been dropped off. Now that is an important concept that we're going to come back and revisit here in just a minute because we have to remember that the simple moving average only includes data that is specifically outlined in its look back period. It does not include any historical data that existed before its look back period actually began. So a linear weighted moving average was designed basically to try to provide signals that were a little faster. And the idea is to overweight the more recent data. So here's the way that it was, it's constructed. Let's say that we take the data from the most recent day, which we want to have a heavier weight. We're gonna then multiply that by the day's number. So in this case, that's day five. And we're gonna do that for each one of these. So that's gonna give me a value here on the linear one of 502.10, 401.184, then I get 303027, and then 201, 512, 512, and then finally, we get this one here, which is gonna be the same, 100.319. Now, what's important about this is that you'll notice the weighting here, obviously this one, basically the most recent day, is five times more important or more weighty than the furthest day in history. So if we were to total all these up, then I'm gonna get a value of 1508.142. Now, from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide it by the sum of all of these day numbers. So the day values, if I were to sum that all up, that's actually 15. So I'm gonna divide this by 15. It's gonna give me a linear moving average number for today for of 100.5. 2, 8. Now that is a little different than the day that came before. So we can see uh, on just a one day basis, we might not notice that this is all that different, but actually over time, it's going to make a big difference as to where that moving average shows up on the price chart. Now an exponential moving average is uh, a little different. It, it includes some of the benefits of a linear moving average in the fact that it, it weights the more recent data much more heavily than the data further back. But the other thing that it, it also does is it, with both the linear weighted moving average as well as the simple moving average, they drop off. So the data that is beyond the look back period is not included in the calculation. So the exponential moving average, theoretically anyway, it has no limit to how far back it actually pulls data because each day's exponential moving average value is actually a component of the next day's calculation of an exponential moving average, which that calculation is probably beyond the scope of where we wanna go here in the video. The point is that we are gonna get a moving average that is gonna move faster for the same time period that we're using. It's gonna move faster than the simple moving average, and it'll be a little different than the linear moving average. And the advantage that a lot of investors are looking for is that it includes all the possible data that's available historically. So if I were to do this calculation here, it would actually be 100.7159. 7159. So we're going uh, way out here. Now, here's what the moving average is actually going to look like when we evaluate it on a chart in the, all three variations where we're looking at it on a short-term basis, so five periods. And then we're also going to look at it and how it appears 
on a chart where I've increased the look back period to 40, so from five to 40. Now from a trading perspective, there are a few ways that we can use a moving average from some that are fairly simple where we're just using it to evaluate potential support or resistance levels to something that's a little bit more sophisticated where we use a couple of moving averages to not only identify the trend, but also to evaluate how strong that trend actually is. So let's start with an example. We're just gonna look at a moving average. I have a 50 period simple moving average and we're gonna look at for resistance levels. So in this example on the yen, you can see that the price was falling, the moving average was also declining, and when the price would come up to or just above briefly that moving average, what that's telling us is that it's signaling resistance level that's a bit more sensitive than just a generic trend line. Now this is a similar example, except that everything is reversed in that the moving average is acting as support here on the pound. Every time the price came back down to the moving average, or perhaps we had very brief excursions beyond the moving average, it subsequently bounced, so it gave us a more adaptive trend line than we would have otherwise. Now, one of the problems that we have with moving averages is how they behave in a channel. So we want to develop ways to try to avoid that as much as we can. So let's take a look at a couple of charts. Now, as you can see here, I have a simple moving average that's been applied to the chart. And because the price is relatively flat, all it's doing is just channeling around the moving average is more or less a median price point, And it's really not telling a trader anything very useful. Now, one of the ways that we deal with this particular problem is that we'll add moving averages together a short one with a long one. Here I've applied a 25 period simple moving average with a 50 period simple moving average. What we're looking for on this chart is to identify a time where we have the short period moving average above the long period moving average, which is confirming a bullish trend. Now we're still just looking for support bounces off of one of the two moving averages, but we want to filter those a little further by making sure that the tips of the moving average at the time are still both heading higher. Here's a bearish example where we have the same basic idea, but it's reversed. The shorter period moving average is below the longer period moving average, which confirms that we have a bearish trend. And we're looking for resistance bounces off of one of those moving averages that is further filtered that when that signal actually occurs, the tips of those moving averages at the time are still declining on a day to day basis. Now traders can apply these same principles, but just take it a step further to identify take profit or stop loss levels with moving averages as well. So for example, a take profit or stop loss level might be triggered if the moving averages are breached and the tips of one of the moving averages or both is pointing away from the trend or beginning to decline on a day to day basis. You can see what I mean here on the Canadian dollar where the price breached the moving average and the moving averages were actually declining on a day-to-day -day basis or moving lower, telling us that that bullish trend was losing momentum. Moving averages are a simple tool, but they're absolutely indispensable for investors who are looking for a way to not only identify the trend, but also to filter valid support or resistance bounces within that trend.